After a decade-long hiatus, Luba is back with a new look, a new label, and a new attitude. Since dropping from the Canadian music scene, she has experienced a lot of personal hardship, but has come out on top. She has kick-started her career with a new album and has created her own independent record label. We'll follow her journey from 80s pop star to today's solo artist and businesswoman. Luba grows up in Montreal in a traditional Ukrainian household. Her mother works in a catering company and her father works in a factory. I saw how hard it was for them and how hard they worked. What my parents sort of taught me by way of, of just watching them was to be careful with your money because you don't know how long, how long it'll last. Luba's musical talents are evident from a very early age. By her teen years, she is the musical starlet of Canada's Ukrainian community, singing at weddings and other events all across the country. At age 14, she cuts the first of her two Ukrainian folk albums. It was a good learning experience for me, plus that was my training ground for what came later. When she reaches university in 1978, she decides that she wants to play to a broader audience and starts a rock band with her boyfriend, Peter Marunchak. They call the band Luba. When we started the band, we took a vote, like, who wants to write? And no, nobody, you know, raised their hand except me. I, I'll try it. Luba plays the university circuit and by 1981 develops quite a following. That same year, her father suffers a heart attack. She rushes to the hospital to be by his side. He grabbed my hand and he said, you know, if you want to sing, go, go ahead, you can do it, but just don't play those clubs. <laughs> and I sort of giggled and I laughed and, and everything seemed okay. And I went home and later that day, I got a phone call and uh, about 4 p.m. and he had, he had passed away. So, I suppose uh, that was his way of saying goodbye. Grieving over the death of her father, Luba writes the song, Every Time I See Your Picture. And the song becomes a Montreal area hit. Every time I see your picture, I cry. Luba and her band are determined to take their music further. In 1983, with the money they earned from the university circuit, some club shows and a lot of favors from friends, they finance and record a demo. They send it out to dozens of record companies with the hope of landing a record deal. After countless rejections, they finally sign with Capitol Records in 1984 and they release the song Every Time I See Your Picture as a single. Almost overnight, it shoots up the pop charts, eventually landing the number one position in Canada. I think my father was kind of smiling down on her when it did become a great hit because it's a beautiful song and it was all about him. And uh, sometimes we, we still do cry <laughs> when we hear it. Capital is impressed with the success of her song, and seeing tremendous promise in Luba, they decide to finance her first full-length album, Secrets and Sins. The album is a huge success. Record sales are high, and the album unleashes Luba's second big hit, Let It Go. Luba and her band are thrilled. They're working with some of the top people in the Canadian music industry, touring the country, earning great salaries for performing, and Luba receives royalty checks for her songwriting. But the expenses of touring and promoting are very high, and they work hard for their money. It was a lot of hard work. I mean, basically the 80s was all a blur of performing, recording, performing, recording, interview, video, this, that. Luba's efforts do not go unnoticed. She wins numerous awards, including the Juno for Best Female Vocalist three years in a row. 
But even though she is a star in the music world, she remains true to her good girl image. Unlike most stars, she lives at home with her mother and saves her money. Too much of a good thing is never, never enough. In 1986, Luba marries her drummer and longtime boyfriend Peter. Life is good. Riding high on the heels of her success in Canada, Luba is ready to break into the international market. And then Hollywood comes knocking at her door. Luba is asked to record the title track for the film Nine and a Half Weeks. I really didn't know what the movie was about. I mean, nobody told me very much. It was just like, you, you want to be on a soundtrack? I mean, the rhythmics and, and uh, Duran Duran. You don't have to ask me twice. Although the film is a hit, Capitol Records decides not to promote the soundtrack, a decision that would cost her the chance of breaking into the lucrative American market. I think that was a turning point for me where I started to realize that I don't seem to have any power to be able to say, no, I want this, and nobody took me seriously. And not having that, it was detrimental to my career. Instead, the record company finances another album for the Canadian market, Between the Earth and Sky. Luba maintains her golden touch and produces another hit aptly named, How Many. That same year, while Luba is away at a promotional event, her tour bus is involved in an accident seriously injuring many of her band members. When I saw the pictures of the, I mean, the bus was like an accordion. There were uh, broken noses, glass in people's faces. One of the musicians, a keyboard player, he, he broke his pelvis. I mean, it was, it was awful. And I think when uh, we had that bus accident, things changed. It wasn't all fine games anymore. And from then on, it seemed to be a little bit of an uphill climb. Luba and her band worked through this difficult period. She continues writing songs, and in 1989, they record another album, All or Nothing. Luba's new album went platinum, and her career was back in high gear. But things were falling apart behind the scenes. A much-anticipated tour was called off, and morale within the group was low. Luba's marriage was also on the rocks. It looked as though the magical years were coming to an end. Well, the band had started in 1978, and uh, we had been together for over 10 years. It's a long time, and I was tired. In 1990, Luba's marriage with Peter ends. The following year, unable to agree on the direction of her career, she breaks from Capitol Records and the band calls it quits as well. This turn of events would take Luba out of the public eye. Luba keeps a low profile for the next 10 years, playing only private shows and benefit concerts. Because they no longer perform, the band members move on and are forced to find other jobs. Luba continues to write songs and lives off her royalties and savings. What would it take? What would you give for the chance to live? Soon after the band's break, Luba's grandmother, to whom she was very close, passes away. Then in 1995, her mother dies of cancer. So with the death of my mother, I think that's when the personal and spiritual part of my life started to sort of unravel a little bit. The pain of these events would force Luba to reevaluate the direction of her career. 